Hi, this is Dr Shipfield from Malmesbury School Science and today we're going to be having a look at the required practical that is the food tests. It's important to say at this point that these food tests, while they are required practical and could be examined on that basis, often crop up in other exam questions. For example, the iodine test for starch often comes up in questions about photosynthesis. So please bear that in mind, these questions could crop up at different points in the exam. The first thing we have to do is prepare some samples of food for testing and then we're going to use the food tests to identify which different chemicals are found in these different food types. We're going to test some apple, some biscuit and some cheese. The way I would do this, if you're going to do these food samples, I would do them in this order. I would do biscuit, and then apple and then cheese. Essentially they are in order of messiness and you have to clean up between each one. So I think it's the, it's the best way to go. Uh, and you leave the cheese for last because it causes, uh, say, the most mess. So starting with the biscuit, the first thing we need to do is take ourselves a small sample of biscuit. We then grind that biscuit sample up in a pestle and mortar. So I'm just trying to grind it up to nice small pieces. I'm just going to show you the biscuit, but you need to prepare all three food samples in the same way. So grind it up nice and small. We're then going to transfer the biscuit into a small 100ml beaker. And then add a small amount of distilled water. Doesn't really matter how much we add. Just a reasonable volume. Uh, I'm not too big, not too small. Uh, sort of that amount. It then needs a really good stir and what we're trying to do here is dissolve the chemicals uh, in the food into the water. So particularly what we're testing for today are sugars, proteins and fats. So we're trying to get those chemicals out of the food and into the water. So a really good stir. While that's dissolving we have to prepare a conical flask, a filter funnel and some filter paper. We're going to filter the sample. The reason we do this is that food tests are subjective. You are looking for a colour change that you have to decide uh, if that colour change has occurred or not. The food itself can be coloured or can produce cloudy suspensions. That can make it much harder to see the colour change you are looking for in the food test. So the idea of filtering here is to remove as much of the solid food as we can to help us more clearly distinguish the colour changes that we are going to see. So we're going to filter the food, so into a conical flask, a filter funnel and some filter paper, one last stir and in it goes. So in goes, this is our biscuit and water and distilled water and it's going to filter away. That takes some time, so I'm going to put that to one side. So I do have some samples that I've made earlier, uh, I'm now going to take you through how to do the four food tests using a pre-prepared sample. But that is how you prepare all the samples, just the same way, filtering the food out and collecting the, the fluid afterwards. I should also mention that once you've ground your biscuit up, the pestle and mortar need to be cleaned and you then use fresh glassware uh, and a clean pestle and mortar to grind up and test your next food sample. So you must make sure this is clean between experiments. So we're going to take a food sample here, so I've got some uh, filtered apple solution here, so this is an apple suspension, so I've cut up some apple, I remove the skin, because the skin isn't going to be particularly useful in this test, it's just going to block up the filter funnel, so I've cut a section of apple up, removed the skin, I've ground it up in the pestle and mortar, added some distilled water, and I've now filtered this, so I've got a suspension here of apple solution. We're going to do the four food tests, so we need four test tubes, and I'm going to add a small amount of apple solution to each tube. It doesn't particularly matter how much we add, roughly somewhere about sort of two mil would be good. So I now have four tubes, uh, each with uh, roughly two, mi two millilitres or two centimetres cubed of, of apple solution in. It, so it doesn't particularly matter exactly how much you use, you just need to make sure you've got enough apple solution to go uh, into each of the four tubes. The first two tests we're going to do are both for carbohydrates. These are sugars. The first test is for very short carbohydrates such as glucose and this is called the Benedict's test. So we're going to take our first tube of apple solution and we're going to add this blue solution of Benedict's reagent. If you're asked about uh, the methods for this technique in an exam, you add 
Benedict solution. And it starts as a blue colour. You then have to place the tube of food and Benedict solution in a hot water bath. So this is a recently boiled kettle. Again, if you're asked about the method in an exam, you must say the sample uh, needs heating. So you add Benedict reagent to the food sample and then heat. Uh, we can leave that now and see uh, what colour change we get later. The second test for a carbohydrate is a test for starch. This is a, a, a large polymer of glucose that's found in plants. And the test for this is an iodine test. This is one that can come up particularly in questions about photosynthesis. The product of photosynthesis being glucose, plants then store excess glucose as starch. And so a presence of starch is a sign that photosynthesis has occurred. But in this case, we're looking for starch in this food sample. Nice easy test, all we have to do is add some iodine. Again, just a squirt of iodine. Now the iodine is initially an orange colour and we'll see what colour change we get at the end. The third test we need to do is a test for lipids or fats. So the test for that involves using ethanol. I should say at this point, the AQA method asks you to grind up some food for this test, add some distilled water and not to filter it and just test the food sample with water together. Uh, that works, that's fine, you can do that. It might be easier, you've already made the filtered sample, to just use a filtered sample of your food here, that's what I'm going to do, and the test works perfectly fine. So it just saves a little bit of work if you want to do it that way. So we're going to add some distilled water to our sample, the sample already has distilled water in it, so that's not a problem, so we add distilled water to our sample, and we're now going to add uh, some ethanol, just a little bit of ethanol, a few drops is, is plenty. Add some ethanol. So the ethanol test, having added the distilled water and the ethanol, you now need to shake vigorously. So we're going to place a bung in the top of the tube to prevent any accidents. Give it a really good shake. And again, we'll come back and see uh, what results we got for the food samples in a moment. The fourth food test is a test for proteins. To do this test, again, we have our filtered food sample. This time we're going to add something called Biorex reagent. This is the test for protein. It's a, a light blue colour, so it's a blue colour to start with. So we add some to our food sample, and we can just leave it uh, again to look at results later. So nice, uh, again, nice and easy, uh, but you add Biorex reagent, it starts as light blue, and we'll see the colour change. That's how we, how we do our four tests. You need to know the methods, the, the techniques we've done there, uh, the chemicals you've added, the start colour, and anything else like adding heat that you've done in the method. Equally important though is to know the colour changes you should see for a positive test for those different types of food. So a positive test for glucose, uh, for a small carbohydrate, for starch, a large carbohydrate, for lipids or fats and for protein. I've got my food times I made of it earlier and I did the, all these tests earlier and I want to show you the results now so you can see some of the colour changes you should see. These are all for apple samples. So we can see here, this is the Benedict test and it's gone from a blue colour to orange. Benedict's test produces quite an interesting array of colour changes. Benedict starts blue, if glucose is present you see a sequence of colour changes. The further along the colour change you get, the more sugar you actually have in your sample. So you can describe this as a semi-quantitative test because it gives you an indication through colour changes of actually roughly how much sugar you have, uh, a lot or a little. The other tests simply tell you if the chemicals are present or, or not. It goes from blue to green to yellow to orange and eventually to brick red. All of those colours are a positive indication of a sugar like glucose. Any of those colour changes are an acceptable answer for an exam, uh, but brick red would show the most sugar present is kind of the, the end result. We've got a nice dark orange colour here suggesting there was quite a lot of sugar, a lot of glucose in our apple. Um, we've then got the iodine test, uh, so we've added some iodine to see some starch. And we've actually got no real, real changes there, so we haven't got the positive result there. So no indication yet of the positive result for starch. Got the fats or lipids test. We've got the solution here uh, is, is clear and colourless still. So again, there's no indication of fats there, so we don't, we don't know what positive uh, result looks like for lipids yet. So that's a, a negative result. And finally, the protein result. Again, there's no obvious colour change here. Uh, so it's a negative result. 
So here's the sample of biscuit I prepared a little while ago and we've got a lovely Benedict's result here. It's got a, a nice orangey colour verging towards dark brick red and that's a positive of sugar. So there is sugar, uh, glucose in biscuit, not too much of a surprise there. The iodine test, we now get to see the positive result here. Iodine initially started as orange and we now have a positive result of a black colour or a blue black colour. That is an indication we have lots of starch here. So there's a positive result for starch. The ethanol test for lipids or fats, we have a cloudy suspension now. It's gone milky coloured, cloudy white is the way you should describe this colour. It's cloudy white, not just cloudy. That is a positive result for fat or lipids. So again, unsurprisingly in biscuits there is there's a, a fat content there. And we've got the biorex test here. Not much of a change, so we haven't got a positive result for proteins there. A final sample uh, was my cheese sample for food test. Benedict's test has remained blue, so nothing really here, no real glucose in this sample in sugar. That's not a surprise, cheese is not particularly sugary. The iodine test has actually got a positive result. This is very strange in an animal product which is cheese. Animals do not store glucose as starch, they store glucose as another chemical, another polymer called glycogen. However, we use grated cheese. If you use grated cheese, you may well see a positive result for iodine because to keep the bits of grated cheese separate, the manufacturers add a food additive, which is starch powder. So we're actually seeing uh, an additive here that's giving a positive result. So again, we've got the blue-black colour, a positive test for starch. But that is unexpected. If you don't use grated cheese, you shouldn't see that. We now have the ethanol test, test for lipids. Again, gone slightly cloudy cloudy white, so positive test for fats or lipids, again in cheese that's not, that's not a huge surprise, cheese is quite a fatty food, so this cloudy uh, layer here is a positive result for fats. And finally we do actually have a nice positive result for protein, so cheese again very high in protein content. And what we've got here, the Biorex reagent started as a blue colour, a positive result for protein with Biorex reagent, it goes from blue to pink or purple, so that's a lovely positive result there. So we've, we've shown here how to do all the four food tests there, shown you all four potential positive results and identified different chemicals in our different types of food. Finally, if you are a teacher and you've enjoyed this video but you are teaching outside of your specialism and you feel that some of these require practicals, you're lacking a little bit of confidence in them, then we are part of the Avon Teaching School Alliance. We run a variety of courses that help you brush up on skills outside your specialism, building your confidence in these areas. Please click on the link in the description below to find out more about the courses that we offer.